Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. So in this tutorial, I just want to show you how I quickly kit bashed this uh, sort of cyberpunk scene using Marmoset Toolbag. Um, all the assets I've used are from 3D Scan Store. There's no external or third party textures. Um, the hair, the head, the jacket, um, they're all 3D Scan Store assets. Um, here's just a few quick sort of renders of the scene itself. So we've got a lot of detail in there. And I want to begin just by showing you how I set up the initial Marmoset scene. And we'll start off with loading in the assets and looking at the lighting. So in order to make the scene, we're going to need three items, basically. We're going to need the head, obviously, the hair and the jacket. The background object is just a cube that I've made in Marmoset. So if we have a look here on ScanStore, the head that I'm going to use is this one, uh, female head 06. Um, the clothes that I'm going to use are, it's actually a man's jacket, it's actually this one. Um, so that's the jacket we're going to use. And the hair is just, um, we've just started creating X-Gen hairstyles <clears throat> and this is the hairstyle that I'm going to use. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is get the scene set up in Marmoset. So when you buy one of the uh, HD head scans, it comes with a Marmoset scene, which has got everything all set up and working, including all the shaders, um, eye shaders, reflection in the eyes, <clears throat> lashes, all that sort of stuff. It all just works straight out of the box. So what we want to do is just adapt the scene so we don't have to create any new skin shaders or anything like that. So let's start by loading in the jacket. So in the jacket model, when you download it, you get the choice. You've got the FBX models, you've got all the textures, everything there. So what we're actually going to use here is the decimated model. Um, this is a decimated version of the high resolution subtool, subtool, subdivision level six um, model from ZBrush. So we'll just load that into the scene. Where is it? There it is up there. Just move that into position. I'm just going to change the pivot point on this. Just click edit pivot point. And then I'm just going to drag it into the sort of correct position for this head. Um, it's a bit big, but I quite like that. And that's kind of the look that we're going for really as a sort of big comfortable kind of thing. And we're not going to see any of this area here. We're only really focusing on the um, the top half because this is just a sort of quick kit bash scene. It's not meant to be a um, full final model. Uh, I might just scale it down a little bit because I think it's a little bit big. Just have it about there. Actually, let's just move it up a little bit so it's a bit bigger. So it's sort of covering her neck a bit. Kind of like that sort of oversized cyberpunk collar thing that everybody loves. So I think, yeah, we'll go for something like that. And something I like to do quite early on is just actually frame the, the scene a little bit just so we know what we can work on and what we don't have to work on. So in the main camera options in Marmoset, you just go to save frame and just click that on. And then in the render settings, just check your camera resolution. So I'm just going to set it to 384 by 216. And now you can see we've got a, um, a safe frame here that shows us what the scene's going to look so we can sort of frame it a bit better. I think I'll just move this jacket a little bit now because it looks a little bit... Maybe just scale it a bit smaller. There we go. Something like that. And for the textures, we'll just load in the generic textures that come with this jacket just to start with, just to get the scene set up. So to do that, we'll just make a new material. We'll just call it jacket. Drag it onto the jacket. And then we'll load in the normal map, which is in jacket folder textures. It's in the real time folder, normal map. I'll start to add some detail to the jacket. Now we will add the albedo map. Now we'll add the roughness and also the metalness map. These all come with the model. There you go. So that's textured. 
And the next thing we want to load in is the hair. So I will just show you how that works in Blender. So here we are in Blender. Um, we've got our um, head scan loaded in. I just uh, file import FBX and just import the, um, the same OBJ or FBX that you're using in Marmoset. And now we're going to want to load in the Alembic hair that was exported from the Maya XGen scene. So we'll just go to File, Import, Alembic, and then we'll just go into our Space Buns, which is the name of the hairstyle, Scenes, and Space Buns.abc. Now you might notice that these have imported as, at a different scale, and that's to do with the Alembic export from Maya. So what we want to do is scale them all to the same scale as the head. So just control click all of the items you want to scale, which is all the separate parts of the hair, and then hold down Alt and click the scale. And holding down Alt means it'll modify all of the uh, objects at once. So we're going to want to do 0 0.01, and then hold down Alt and click the next one, 0 0.01, and then Alt again, and 0 0.01 on the last one. And there we go. We have the hair loaded into the scene. <clears throat> so in order to export this uh, to render in Marmoset, Marmoset can't render Olympic uh, guides, we need to convert these to polygons. So the simplest way to do this is really easy in Blender. Basically, I'll just do it on one strand to show you, because I don't want to do all of them, because it'll take forever. Well, not forever, but it'll take 20 minutes. So let's take one of these. Um, these pieces, for example. So all you do is select the hairstyle or the section of the hair you want to convert. Click Object Data Properties tab, just this one here. And then you've got a tab called Geometry. And in here, you can set the profile, the depth and the resolution of the geometry for the hair. So we're going to set it to profile. Um, we're going to set the depth to 0.1. And then we're going to set the resolution to zero because we don't want to make huge, huge files. And if I zoom in now, you'll be able to see that this has actually been converted into real geometry. So that's no longer just a guide or a one point poly, it's actual geometry. And then getting this out of um, Blender and into Marmoset is simply a case of export and just export that as a hair OBJ and you can see here I've already exported the um, all of the different pieces of the hair ready to be loaded into Marmoset. This can take a little bit of time as well I should point out. Um, I think exporting some of the larger pieces of hair like the um, you know the top pieces here that took about five minutes for my machine to actually do that so just bear in mind that it can take a little bit of time. Okay so we're back in Marmoset now and we just want to import that hair that we've just exported from Blender. So just go to Import Model, select the hair that you want to import. We'll just use that strand just as a quick example. And there we have the hair imported directly from Blender. So you can see it renders quite nicely as it is. And because this character is going to have, um, you know, sort of uh, long white hair, I don't think we really need to worry too much about the hair shader. Um, to be honest, I think I'm just going to keep it as it is with the default shader on. Um, I think adding some highlights and stuff to it maybe we'll look at a bit later, but I it, it don't think it particularly needs it because of the matte nature of the, the colour. So we'll just import the rest of that hair and I'll do that quickly and pause this while I do it. Okay, so here we have all the hair imported into Marmoset and it's, um, it's a big model. So it's going to slow Marmoset down quite a bit. So you can see it's kind of chugging along there. So what I'm actually going to do is just put it all into a folder. So just select all the objects, click the folder button, and now I can just switch it off. And you know, we're back, oh, I missed one there. Just these little strands at the back. Uh, where are they? Back strands. And there. Uh, we can just turn it off so we don't need to have that on you know while we're setting up the lighting and stuff like that we'll sort of switch it on and off periodically just to check it so now we have more or less everything in the scene that we're going to use for the model so the next thing we need to look at is the lighting 
Okay, so in terms of lighting, the first thing that we want to do is add the background object just so we can sort of frame everything up um, and then figure out what lights we need to do the rim um, and sort of any, you know, uh, lights that are going to come from the background. So the background is basically just a sort of little sci-fi image that I got off Google. Um, it's nothing special, it's just a little sort of do for a thing. I don't really know what it is. And to add that into the scene, all I did was I went to plugins um, and generate primitives. And we're just going to click cube and add. And there we have a gigantic cube. So that cube's way, way too big. So we're just going to go into the setup view here. And we're going to find the gigantic cube and scale it down just using the scale key board shortcut and sort of make it into a kind of a an oblong my computer is being a bit clunky here we're just going to position it behind her and then we're just going to add a um, surface to that We'll just make a new material and we'll just call it background or BG, nice and short. And then we will drag that onto the surface and then we'll simply load in that little um, image that I had earlier. I think I just called it screen. There you go. And now what we want to do is make that emissive. So we'll go to emissive, add the emissive shader there. And again, just add that on. And then we can control the intensity of it. And I might just change that color a little bit, just give it a little bit of a sort of greeny kind of color. There we go. And now we've got the background in there. I might just turn the um, roughness down on it a little bit just so it's not so reflective. You can see the light, the key light is actually reflecting off it there. All right, so I'm just going to reposition the background a little bit just so it's kind of in the, in the right place and maybe just scale it a little bit as well. Scale it down a little bit. Okay, it's not particularly bright at the minute, but we're going to add some lights in to simulate the glow from this. So we will actually make that brighter with the the next light that we're going to add, which is going to be the rim light, which you'll see will um, affect um, here like a, and shine, you know, light her hair from behind and her jacket as well. Just before we do that, we're just going to change this um, light here. This is the main light that's in the scene when you get the Marmoset tool bag scene open from the scan store scans. There's two lights. There's the studio in here, which is currently enabled, and there's this one, which is just a a grey background with a light on it that you can move around. So we're going to enable that scene um, and then we're just going to position the light just a bit kind of like this um, and we're going to turn the brightness of the background down a bit. And we're going to turn the brightness of the child light up a little bit. And we can actually just move this child light around just by dragging and clicking it here so we can kind of oh, position it wherever you want. Um, I'm just going to put it about here which is something you just want to glint in her eyes a little bit about there and just turn the child light brightness up a little bit and the child light also has a secondary light attached to it which is kind of like um what the outer one does is creates a sort of a larger kind of foam speck and the little one is kind of like the actual intensity of the bulb in the middle which creates a sharper highlight so i'm just going to change the color of that a little bit just make it a bit sort of a bit more orangey maybe see if that works Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, might be a bit. Yeah, I don't know. I might just keep it a bit brighter. Anyway, something like that. We'll just turn the brightness of this light up just a tiny bit, just to. I actually quite like this sort of reflection that's going on here in the background. So now we're just going to add our um, rear rim light that's going to simulate the lighting from the background. So we're going to do that by creating a new light. So just click the new light 
button there and you'll see it appear on your screen. So at the minute it's a um, it's a spotlight. We don't want that. We want an omni light. So we'll just change that to omni, and we'll just sort of move it into position. That would probably work. Something like that. And you can see here we're getting this really harsh kind of jaggedy shadow. So we want to increase the diameter of the area of the shape. So we'll just drag that up a bit. And you can see that starts to soften off the shadows quite a bit. And we also want to make that the color of the background. So we'll just click the color. You can actually select um, from the screen, which is pretty cool. Let's make that a bit more pink, I think. Something like that. Let's have a look at that in the scene. So I think that kind of works. We'll maybe fiddle with that, you know, when we're doing some tweaking at the end. Um, and now I think I want to add something over here, like a sort of blue light. So you can see from the, um, the image here, I've got quite a nice sort of blue light kind of coming in from this side. So I'll just go ahead in here and create a blue light. So again, Omni light color, it's going to make it a sort of a bluey, bluey kind of hue. And then in the setup scene window, set it to Omni. And I'm just going to set the diameter again, a bit bigger so it doesn't create too much of a sharp, harsh angle. And then I'm just going to turn the brightness up until we can start to see it on our face. So I'm just going to position that about there, I think, for the meantime. there a bit. And again, I quite like this, what it's doing to this sign here, um, but I might tweak that a bit. So the next thing I want to do is just see how that looks with the hair. So we'll just click the hair back on quickly just to see if it's working. And I think it's looking pretty good. So we've got that nice pink light simulating the light from the um, background and then a nice sort of blue blue kind of rim here um, I might just add another little light in just sort of up here a bit later on just to try and sort of help light the darker areas of her nose but one thing that we want to do here is we want to add um, a sort of a bounce card light maybe underneath here um, just to bounce a bit of light up onto her face and the way I'm going to do that is quite cheesy. I'm not going to use a light. I'm actually going to use another cube. So I'm just going to go to template or plugin, sorry, and create generate primitive. And I'm going to click cube again. You can use a plane if you want. I just like cubes. They're easier to sort of see what you're doing with. Well, that looks quite cool. That looks really cool. Anyway, we'll scale this cube down so it's the right size. Currently it's massive as usual. And this is really chugging now when it's rendering because it's, it's calculating all sorts of scattering and bounce light inside that cube. So I'm going to scale that down. And I'm also going to flatten it a bit. This is what's great about Marmoset. You know, you can just do stuff in real time so quickly and see, you know, updated real time ray tracing. And maybe just move it up a little bit. Boop. I'm just going to put it there like that. And let's have a look and see the difference with the on and off. So you can see it's kind of lighting her from below a bit. It's creating a bit of a bounce, which I think always helps. Um, because unless she's standing in a you know room with a completely black floor, there's always going to be a bit of bounce light. So I think that's working quite well underneath. So I'm going to leave that cube there again. You know, if you zoom out, you'll see this horrible cube, but we're not actually focusing on that area. We're just focusing on the, the top half as it's just a quick sort of kit bash. Um, so like I said, I think I'll add a nice little orange kind of little fill light in here. So again, I'm just going to go to add a new light. Going to make it orange ish. Gonna make it into an omni light. 
going to turn that hair off because it's really slowing things down. Just go into my setup view and here's my little orange light here. So I'm just going to move that up here a bit. Increase the diameter a little bit. Just something like that, just a little bit of a fill. Nothing, you know, particularly strong. And then I'm just going to check that with the hair on just to see how it looks. Cool. Okay. So that's getting there. She's actually missing a strand of hair here. Um, I might have accidentally deleted it. I've loaded two, two of that one in. So I'll just fix that. Okay, so I've just loaded that um, hair card that was or hair geometry and that was missing. So got the full hairstyle now. So now we've done that, we want to start looking at eyes, eyebrows, and the pose of the face. So the eyebrows and the eyelashes, they're really easy. We're just going to make them white. So what we'll do is we will select her eyebrows, find the um, shader in here, eyebrows, and we'll just make them white like that. Maybe make the alpha a bit less. And you can see her eyebrows in the texture underneath. Don't worry about that. We'll actually remove that in the next stage because we haven't done her face texture yet. And her lashes again, we want those to be white. So I just change those. Cool. So we're getting there. So now we're going to do her eyes and her face texture because I have actually modified the face texture a little bit because you can see here she's got a full sort of human skin tone whereas in the final image we're going for a more sort of cyberpunky very very pale somebody that's never seen the daylight maybe they've lived in like the depths of a you know like a massive industrial city for their whole lives but anyway we're going to desaturate the skin on the texture and paint out those eyebrows Okay, so here we have the skin texture for the mesh that we're using. Again, this comes with the, um, the model. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually just decrease the image size because it's 16K and we don't need that. So I'm going to reduce it down to 8K. Um, <clears throat> and now to create the uh, sort of look that we've got here, I want to desaturate this a bit. So I'm just going to do um, brightness contrast. No, sorry, not brightness contrast. Um, hue saturation. And I'm just going to turn the saturation down quite a bit to about there, maybe. But I don't necessarily want to set desaturate all of her because even though she might be desaturated in terms of her skin color, her lips are relatively full of blood. So, you know, we want to keep them sort of a lip color. So I'm just going to select a gray here, select the mask, and then I'm just going to paint out the um, lips here on the mask. Maybe a bit more even. Just to try and keep the colour of the lips a little bit. And then for the eyebrows, let's just turn that layer off. We'll do this on another layer as well. I'm just going to select the um, spot healing brush, which is this one. And to get rid of the eyebrows, I'm just going to go splodge and splodge. And I'm using the mouse here because my microphone's actually sitting on my Wacom. So please um, don't make fun of me for my Photoshop skills at the moment. But this will do. This will literally do. Cool. So then we've got desaturated version with slightly saturated lips. So let's save that and see how it looks. So I'm just going to save it in my folder, Cyberpunk tutorial that I'm doing. We'll just call it. I'll save it as a PSD so I can go back and modify it. Face albedo. And now we'll go into Momset and swap out this albedo map in the head texture. There you go. We're starting to get that sort of really pasty kind of look now that we have in the, in the original image. 
Uh, maybe I'm just going to adjust the lighting a little bit because you can see here we've got quite a nice sort of shadow on the on the face. A bit more like this, I think. Cool. Okay, and now we want to modify the eyes as well because. Well, they're brown and they don't look right. We want these sort of blue kind of wolf eyes that she's got, which I think look really cool. So I'll just go into Photoshop and load up the eye texture. Okay, so I've loaded up an eye texture. So this eye texture is actually from a different one of the scans on the scan store. It's somebody who actually has blue eyes. The model that we chose had brown eyes. So I'm using this woman's eye texture. And all I'm going to do basically is cut out this section of the eye here, paste it into a new layer, which is what I've got here, layer two. And that is the, um, the center of the eye. And all I've done is just do a levels on it just to make it brighter. So basically just cut out the eye center and then make it brighter and desaturate it a little bit. And that gives us a kind of like bright blue sort of, uh, you know, kind of cyberpunk wolf eye. So I'm just going to save that uh, in the same place. Uh, just call it I. And then in here, I'll simply select the eyeball shader. Oh, hasn't saved it. Why not? Save a copy of that one. I. Here we go, I. And that'll swap out the eyeball texture. So now we've got this sort of kind of terrifyingly blue eye, almost white, which looks pretty cool. So now we've got the skin texture and the eyeballs done. We can maybe play around with the lighting a little bit. Like for example, I think maybe the, um, the key light is a bit too strong given how much we've desaturated her face. So I'm just going to knock it down a little bit, just turn it down just a little bit. And I think the rim light could be repositioned, the blue one a little bit, because I think it's creating too much of a highlight on that side of the face. So we'll just reposition that. Maybe just turn it down a little bit. There we go, something like that. Okay, now what we want to do is pose the eyes um, because they are looking straight forward. There's nothing characterful about somebody just staring straight forward. Just before that, I might just knock the eyelash alpha down a little bit because I think they're a bit strong. So just in the eyelash shader, just turn that alpha down a little bit. And actually the um, texture here, you can see it's a bit dark. So the in the diffuse here, we had, um, looks like she had makeup on. So I'm probably just to get rid of that darkness, I'm just going to do a really quick fix here because this, you don't really want this because it kind of um, destroys the whole white eye thing. I'm just going to select that color there. And again, don't laugh at me, but I'm going to do this. <clears throat> and I know how hacky this is, but trust me, it'll look good. That's smoothing on, let me just turn that off. And then we'll just save that texture again. Nope. Yeah, now we start to get rid of that sort of 
black kind of line that was around her eye. It doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. Right, okay, so we're going to go into posing the eyes now. For this, we're going to do this in ZBrush because this, you could possibly do it in MomZ, but it's not a particularly great. Uh, it's not particularly great at finding center points of objects. So we're going to do all that in ZBrush now. Okay, so here we have our character head in ZBrush. And what I want to do is create like the nice pose I had with her eyes. So we want to make her look to her right. Um, so you can just click on the eyeballs. I'll just turn everything else off here. First thing to do is get the center point of the eyeballs. So we'll click on the eyeball layer. We'll hold down Alt and hit Rotation to center the rotation. And we'll hold down Alt and we will click on this little do for it. And that centers the actual um, the the gizmo in the center of the object that you selected. So when we rotate it now, it'll rotate the eyeball around its sort of pivot point. So we could just sort of do that you know, and just move the eyes um, to wherever you want, really. Do that on both sides. Um, and that's sort of a quick way to do it, I guess, but there is a slightly more accurate way to do it that I prefer. So what we want to do is create some eyeline models. So if we just go to... i just hit the mic there. Sorry, my mic's in the way of my um, Wacom again. Let me just move it. So if we create some objects so we're going to create some cylinders and just scale them down so they're nice and thin scale them down and then stretch them scale them again get it nice and thin there we go and now just rotate those and what we want to do is position those dead center in the middle of each eye so we've got one there And then we'll just duplicate that object and we'll move it over to the other eye. Just zoom in to get it centered. Cool. Okay. So now we've got two straight lines that kind of represent her eye line. And we want to <coughs> use these then to sort of pick the um, focal point of the eyes. So I'll rotate the first eye. So the way to rotate all of this at once. Um, Basically, you can turn the head off, turn off everything you don't want to rotate. So we'll just have this eye and its corresponding cylinder, which is here for some reason, should be underneath it. And we're just going to hit rotate and we're going to click this button here, which is going to transpose all subtools. But if we want to have the head on, that will also transpose the head if we rotate it. So to stop that, if we select the head and just mask the entire head off, and now select the eyeball and rotate, you'll see it doesn't transpose the head. So let's just give her a sort of sideways glance. So that eye looking about there. Something like that. And then for the other eye, we do exactly the same thing. And we want to rotate. But you'll notice if I try and rotate this, see it rotates everything. So basically we want to turn off this eye and we want to also mask this cylinder so it doesn't rotate that either. And now we just rotate this and this and we've got a kind of an eye line. So you can kind of see where she's looking. So if you want her to be sort of looking at you at the camera, which in the scene is, you know, about here sort of thing. You can do it to about there. You can imagine the if they were longer. Um, and then we just turn those off. And you've kind of got some eyes looking to the side, which I think adds a lot more character than um, the, you know, just looking straight forward always looks a bit rubbish. So all we need to do now is just export these eyeballs, replace the ones that we have got. Um, and that should just update in the scene. So I'm just going to export these just into my folder I'm working in Cyberpunk tutorial. Let's call it I right. Make sure you turn off the um, texture when you're exporting an OBJ, otherwise it'll um, export the uh, texture as well, which is always a pain. So we'll just jump back into Marmoset now and we'll see that update. And here we are in Marmoset and you can see the eyes have now rotated um, because we export re-exported over the top of the other ones. 
So we can turn on full quality now. <coughs> and here we have our scene. I might just do a few little tweaks. Um, I think these eyebrows look a little bit, a bit harsh maybe. So we'll just go into the eyebrow shader, browse and just drop the alpha down a little bit more. And in the scene, I've actually moved the um, blue rim light a little bit because I think it was a bit too far around. So I've sort of moved it back. So it's a bit further back. I might actually desaturate that um, face a little bit more, I think. Maybe could go a little bit whiter. So I'll just go into here. Find my albedo and I'll just adjust this hue saturation a little bit. A little bit less saturation. A little bit lighter. And then I'll just save that. There we go. And that's the final scene. So it's very, very quick. I mean, essentially all I did was load in the head, load in the hair, load in the jacket, add a background, which is just a cube, add another cube just to do a bit of up lighting, and then add three lights, which is the purple light from behind, blue uh, rim light, and then a little orange kind of fill light that just sits up here. and doesn't really do a lot. It's just a little fill. And then obviously the main scene light, which comes with the um, the actual scene itself. So all we need to do now is just frame it. Um, so I'm always a big fan of looking up at somebody. I don't know, something like this. And then if you want to render that at high quality in Marmoset, if you go into the render settings, we can adjust everything so we can turn the bounces up. We can, I mean, it's already quite high. Um, you can turn the samples up um, and then you just set your output directory, set your resolution. Let's do a big one. Um, and I haven't changed any other settings in the scene. I haven't changed any of the um, camera settings over and above the original Marmoset scene that you get from ScanStore. So all the exposure, all the tone mapping, everything's exactly the same. So I really haven't touched that. So let's just do a quick render and see what it looks like, full quality. Okay, so here is the final big render. So yeah, it looks pretty cool, I think. Um, we'll go in and we'll do a quick render of the sort of close up of the eye as well, so we can sort of see how that looks. Let's zoom in nice and close to about here. And we'll just focus, middle click, and just hit F10 again to render. Okay, here we are with the close-up of the eyeball. So you can see all the nice skin texture and sort of detail you get from the HD head scans. And then finally, we'll just do a quick render of the sort of, I don't know, the lips maybe. Just middle click on the mouse to focus the zoom and then hit F10 again. The great thing about this is when you hit F10 it automatically loads it into um, Photoshop for you. Here we are. So yeah. And it's very very easy to create scenes like this. I think um, this approach to sort of kit bashing characters with um, scanstone models works really well. Um, again, you know, you could do the same thing with a full body if you wanted to. Um, you know, we've got everything on here. We've got retopologized body scans. Um, you know, you could easily you know dress up a full character, add whatever sort of garments from the, the clothing section that you wanted. Um, we're going to be adding more hair products soon. We only have one at the moment, but we are working on that. So there'll be more coming soon. Um, but thank you very much, and um, 
I hope it was useful and I hope you guys get something from it. So if you have any questions, just um, feel free to put them in the comments uh, on YouTube or in the blog or wherever you see this posted. Um, or you can always email me um, info at 3dscanstore.com. Cheers, guys.